my name is Cara DeFalco. I am host and producer of the only Emmy-nominated cooking show on YouTube, Cara's Cucina. I'm also a chef and culinary expert on QVC. Jersey girl born and raised, really proud Italian-American, and so passion for food really came from growing up in, in an Italian household. I had not only two living grandmothers, but a great-grandmother uh, until I was 18, um, as well as my mom, who's a badass cook as well, and so just grew up around women in the kitchen, and, and I love it. I went to Rutgers University, ultimately got a degree in broadcast journalism. Had you asked me my freshman year what I wanted to do, I was gonna be a DJ on the Z100 morning show. A friend my sophomore year asked me to, not even to audition with him, but just to go for the walk with him while he auditioned for RUTV, which is Rutgers has its own it's one of the few universities, I think, that has its own television broadcast station as well. And I walked in and they just happened to hand me a number on my way in and he was like, I, I was gonna hand it back to them. And he was like, no, 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 do the audition with me because I'll be more comfortable. So I was like, oh, okay, if that's what you need, no problem, you know, help a guy out. And we both wound up getting the position with the station. So that was kind of where I started in, in TV. By the time I was a senior, I was executive producing what was their flagship show, Inside Rockers. I was interning at WNBC in New York City. I started working at NBC Connecticut. It was my first job out of college. I was there for about a year. Came home, worked for what was at the time RNN, which was based out of Westchester. Then I went on to News 12. I was the morning traffic anchor for News 12 New Jersey for five and a half years. And during that time, I started a cooking segment called Kairos Cucina, which I took with me when I left. And, and my husband at the time and I were just decided to keep going with it and make it a YouTube channel. and. And all of a sudden, here we are. <laughs> TV news is a hard, hard industry. I think I worked overnights the entire time. So overnights being, you know, you show up for work at three in the morning, you're working weekends, you're working holidays, you never see your family, you never see your friends. So I, I missed out, I think, on a lot of the things that, the wild things that 20-somethings get to do, you know, the, the late nights and the parties and the, you know, irresponsibility. By the time I was morning traffic anchor for News 12 New Jersey, I really did love that job. I, I loved, you know, I loved being stopped in the grocery store. I loved just meeting the people of New Jersey again. I was born and raised here, so I love this place. I love the people, and I loved telling their stories. When the pandemic hit, I was furloughed from my job. I also did, I did wind up doing some radio for a time. Furloughed from my job in radio, and a friend of mine here in town who used to run the local gelateria, because how life works, found this, this ad that was looking for someone to like represent one of their cookware lines. And so I went through the whole process of auditioning. It literally took months to, to go through this whole process. They called me up and they were like, we love you. But we did find one person that we thought was like a better fit. But they said, we love you so much, we passed you on to our sister station over at QVC. And I was like, oh, okay. Wound up having to go through the whole audition process yet again. They, they wouldn't take the tapes from HSN, but ultimately got the position. So I'm the brand ambassador for Cook's Essentials. And it's just such a great gig because I get to go on air and share recipes and talk about new products. Cook's Essentials I like because it is your everyday kitchen basics. It's pots, pans, it's knives, cutting boards. It's not like the gadgety stuff, which is not really my realm, my niche. I, I don't like gadgety things. I'm like, no, I'm like, just you need like a wooden spoon, a cutting board, and a knife, and a pot. Like, you're good. When people ask, like, oh, you know, did you go to culinary school? I say, no, you know, I'm a graduate of Nonna's Kitchen. I think my particular style, even of Italian American, is a bit unique in that my mother's family's from Piemonte, which is the region that borders France. And my father's family's from Abruzzo, which is due east of Rome, so it's on the Adriatic Sea. You don't find a lot of Piemontese, a lot of northern Italians. When the, the Italian diaspora happened, it was largely southern Italy. So what a lot of folks are familiar with in terms of Italian American food has its roots in Southern Italian cuisine and Italian cuisine is extremely regional. For me, you know, a good portion of what I'm familiar with is that Northern Italian food, which is much more, it's similar to French food. It's, it's milk and cream and butter heavy, a lot less garlic. My great grandmother almost never put garlic in anything, which right, most was like the thing people associate with, with Italian American cuisine. I kind of feel like I have the, the best of both worlds and then kind of this unique perspective on, on both Italian food and Italian American cuisine. One of the other things that I do is take folks on culinary tours of Italy and I structure it specifically around the region so that you learn the regional cuisine of wherever we're visiting. So, and it's kind of twofold. One, I don't like to travel in a way where I'm always living out of my suitcase. So I don't like those trips where, oh, okay, you're gonna start in Milan, we're gonna go to Florence, and then we're gonna go down to Rome, and then to Naples, and over here. I'd like, I, I don't wanna have to repack every two days. And while that kind of gets you like the quick hits of any place, you don't really get to see the culture, and for me, I think the, the culture of Italy specifically is so informed by the cuisine, and vice versa. When you go to 
Tuscany and you have true Tuscan bread. There's no salt in it, it has very little flavor. They do a lot of beans, they do a lot of chicken liver. You know, so it's this really unique cuisine. Uh, our last trip that we did, we did Naples Sorrento and the Amalfi Coast, so Campania. Lemons, seafood, things that are, they're known for. We actually went to Chatara, which is a town of anchovy fishermen, and we had an entire meal based around anchovies. So we had them fried, we had them filleted, we had them marinated, we had them on bread with butter that you would have thought was mayo. It was so golden in color and rich and flavorful. That's the kind of thing I love to take people on because I think, again, we have this one idea of what Italian food is and it's really probably more Italian American food. And then when you get to go there and you go, so my, my hope is actually to do my, my dad's re region of Abruzzo next. The Abruzzi is their, their shepherds. It's a lot of goat and sheep meat and milk. They're known for something, a lot of folks are familiar with Pecorino Romano, which is Roman Pecorino cheese, but there's Pecorino Abruzzes, which is a sheep's milk Pecorino. My family lives along the Adriatic coast. It's a lot of seafood. It's fish that, that the word doesn't even translate because we don't have them here, <laughs> you know? I want to show that to people because I just think it's, A, it's beautiful, and B, you know, if you really love Italy and you love Italian food, it's important to know. Food is truly um, the great equalizer. I mean, I don't know, whoever you are, wherever you are on the planet, at some point to survive, right, for your life, you gotta sit down and eat something. When I look at um, other cuisines like around the world and I see those similarities, I think one of the huge ones you can actually, you can literally draw the, the latitudinal line across the globe from um, like North Central Africa to Northern South America. And if I tell you the dishes are near identical at times and it's like, oh my gosh, like these things traveled with these people and it's now influenced in their culture. Both Venezuela and Argentina have a heavy Italian influence as well. So like gnocchi, uh, the pasta dish of gnocchi is a really big dish for them, but then they again incorporate their own ingredients. So I think you just, you know, you can look at a plate and you see the whole world and it's like, gosh, we're not really that far off. You can find me Facebook and Instagram uh, at Cara DeFalco. You can find the YouTube channel at Cara's Cucina. The website's caradefalco.com. And uh, I, you know, I've just got over 300 step-by-step -step videos that you can follow along. I, I wanna get folks back in the kitchen because when you cook your own food, you can control your ingredients, you can control your health and, um, you can actually make a huge impact on the planet and the world. I don't think people realize the, the power of their dinner plate.